Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. Uh, I'm sitting here with my lovely wife, Miss Southern Shell, and I'm your host, Malcolm Reed. <laughs> I kind of did a little different take on that this week. I don't know if I like it or not, Shell, but we're getting ready to do another episode of the How to Barbecue Right podcast. That, uh, that's correct, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you feeling all right today? I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, I'm feeling great. Today, uh, it's Friday. It's Friday. I like it's, it. Uh, Are we going to La Siesta? The weather. Uh, we might. All right. <laughs> the weather is cool. There's a Cooler. Crisp. Christmas I broke out the air. hoodie, man. We got this hurricane blowing up some yeah, rain, yeah. though. My food plots are loving it. The local seeds are growing out there. My <laughs> deer already hitting them, and I can't wait. We've got about another month before rifle season. Yeah. We're bow season now. I just don't have a bow. I need to, get, I need to buy me a crossbow or compound bow. You're going to go bow hunting? Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it means getting me some fresh back straps. Yeah. That's all I want, some fresh back straps. I don't care nothing about shooting them or doing any of that. I just want the meat. Um, no, I do like hunting. Uh, so today we released our tomahawk steak video. I did one. So I've done the tomahawk. I think the last video I did on one was kind of a sear it and then move it over. Yes. And finish it off that way, kind of with the butter up under it. And it was all the a drippings. reverse, reverse. That one was good. It was a reverse, reverse series, <laughs> that you called it. But <laughs> yeah. this one. Oh, no, I, that one was delicious. So I was talking, this was, uh, I guess it was Brian, some of the butcher was going back down to Kevin's shop down there in Pensacola and asked me if there was anything he, I wanted him to pick me up. And I was like, man, I've been thinking about doing another tomahawk, and I wanted to do one um, just smoked. And that's, I got the idea, I was like, I know it's going to taste good, and I'm not really worried about I, I like a seared steak, but I really like that smoke grilled flavor. So I was kind of going for barbecue notes on it. And that's what I decided to do the video on. He brought me back this beautiful, it was, all, it was like three pounds, two inches thick, tomahawk prime, tomahawk steak. And I said, oh, this is perfect. Yeah. It <laughs> was, I was I was a little like worried what? when he gave it to me. It was in a cry back. I was like, man, I don't know if it's going to fit on the grill. <laughs> it was like, how am I going to saw some of this bone off if, if it won't fit? But I went out there in the cry back and stuck it on the grate. And I said, oh, it's going to work perfect. <laughs> so it, it, was a, it, it was a big steak. It was a big yeah. steak. It was good. I mean, you know, tomahawk, say what you will about it. It's, I mean, it's a ribeye steak. I mean, do you need to cook it on that big bone? No. But does it look cool and a big old handle and holding it and all that? Heck yeah. It looks like something a man like myself <laughs> will want to eat. It looks like something like a caveman probably. Yeah. Ate. You know, it's very primal. I was just looking through. I pulled up on the uh, see how the video was doing. And somebody posted they've never seen anybody just eat one, no utensils, pick it up and eat it. And I wish I would have thought about that. Well, uh, that got- guy's probably going to do a video on it. <laughs> But I, the next time I cook a tomahawk, I'm going to eat the whole thing just on the handle. That's how I'm going to serve <laughs> You don't get no forks. You don't get no knives. You got the choice to rip it off with your fingers <laughs> or pick it up and eat it. That's how a tomahawk should be ate. That makes sense. I'm going to go to Capitol Grill and order one. See if they, <laughs> see if they got a tomahawk on the menu. Just say, What would they say in the white tablecloth? Do you need a knife Bringing out all these sir? courses? No. no. I know what I'm about, son. <laughs> <laughs> just bring that steak down and set it there. <laughs> But no, it turned out really good. It, yeah. it, I mean, that was my first time to ever just straight smoke one. Now, cooking it on the drum as it was going, I was like, you know, if I leave this lid off this drum. Yeah, because you've never done this. And you said that. No, yeah. I've never done you it. You said, I've never done this. Smoked the whole way. I yeah. reverse seared them. Like, yeah. But usually if I reverse sear one, I put it on a pellet grill, bring it up to about 110, and then move it over to the PK or to the Weber over some hot coals and sear it, and it's done. See, I like the way you did it, um, where you brought it up slow, and then you um, put it on a raised strap. No, you seared it. Yeah, just got some sear marks, and then brought it up and controlled it. Yeah, and then you put it on the raised rack, and um, you put the butter and the garlic and everything underneath it, so all the meat juices were dripping down into and then the butter. It back yeah, with it. And that was it good. Back that was really it. good. But which one do you think was better? I don't know. I think this one was they better. Were but they were unique. They're different because yeah. that one you got herbiness. It had char on it because I charred yeah, it and first. And I love the char. And 
but I like, but you don't get near the smoke you doing don't get it that the way. Flavor. This way, it was a hickory smoked tomahawk. Yes. Maybe that's what I should have called it. Hickory smoked tomahawk. Hey, we can go back and change it. You change the name. <laughs> well, on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a, I mean, that's what it was. It was a hickory smoked tomahawk. Now, everybody knows that I say that the drum gives you the most authentic flavor out of any pit that I own. Yeah. Even the stick burners, the jambo, the outlaw, the CTO, pellet grill, egg. The drum gives you more authentic barbecue flavor. It really does. Because you have those meat juices dripping down, coals way down at the bottom below it. And as they sizzle and the wood burns and it smokes and it just penetrates that meat. And it's just the perfect cooking. And whoever figured out cooking on a trash can was a genius. <laughs> because it does. It really tastes like old school barbecue. Yeah. And so that's what flavors that this tomahawk steak absorb. They absorb that hickory smoke. You, you, and they absorb that meat, the juice sizzling on those coals. And, you know, you said you can recreate this uh, recipe on any smoker. Yeah. But you can't do it that same way. Well, you ain't going to create that drum flavor. But you can yes, smoke a steak yes. on any cooker. You could set up a Weber indirect and, and you know, you're not going to create that drum. You can still put some smoke on it. Now, yeah. is it going to get that drum flavor? No, the, the drum flavor is one thing you can't duplicate. Yeah, that's true. A, another you- smoker could if you can get the distance right, you know, away from it. You could You could duplicate that. Yeah. But it's all about distance from the cooking grate to the coals. That's what makes it. That's what indirect. makes a drum unique and indirect. Yeah. And you get all that flavor. You get the advantage of meat dripping on it mixed in with the smoke. Now I wonder, what if you like set up another smoker and you infuse some kind of meats dripping on the coals flavor in it? Like if I could rig up my CTO firebox to have some meat in there and where it was sizzling over them coals as it was pumping smoke up through. Okay, explain it to me again. <laughs> Put some meat in the firebox. So I'm just getting using it oh, just like oh. some old cheap beef or some fat or something. I don't want to start a fire, like but I want onions. to get the yeah, like I throw onions in there. I want to get some meat flavor going in that smoke. Some, uh, yeah. yeah. If, if Royal Oak hey. could figure out a way to make <laughs> meat infused coal, oh, man, they would have something. Hey, that would you be jam the, up. Um, discount section of the yeah, meat get the, market. Get the old stuff. Yeah. I've got to work on that. I don't know how you could meat infuse it, but it's uh. so good. And that's what made that steak good. I, I mean, now it's quality beef. I seasoned it super simple. I didn't. There was no trimming. I didn't trim anything on. I took it out of the package, paper towel, all any moisture off. Now, I was fixing. Yeah, I, was, I was fixing to talk about this. Um, this beef was. Based. If you want to hear like hack. pro tip or what would you call that meat hack? <laughs> <laughs> they got all these fancy words. Where did for you come up something. with? Okay, where did you come up with using the beef based as a binder? Well, so. I've usually always put, you know, sometimes you would put olive oil or a little moisture on them or, you know, on the outside of steaks. For the big steaks. Yeah. Or just steaks in general. Yeah, for steaks, just to get some seasoning to stick. Yeah. And I got to thinking, okay, so when I put a, do a butt, sometimes I want to put a binder on it and I'll put some, you know, mustard on it or something. I said, well, mustard ain't really my thing on beef. And then I, I've i been doing this for probably a month or so, just playing with it. And I've seen all these people using marinades, like beef-flavored marinades for these SEA contests, and I've had that beef concentrate in the refrigerator, and I said, well, I'm going to start, I'm going to see what it's like rubbing a little bit on steak. And I did it one night and didn't tell you. I was just trying to see what the outcome was. It was just some mm-hmm. cheap Kroger steaks I'd had, and I, I, I wanted, they might have been a flat iron. I don't even think it was like a ribeye or anything. It might have been, no, I'll tell you what it was. It was sirloins. That's exactly what it was. It was some sirloins they were had on sale at Kroger. I got that beef marinade, and I just rubbed them down with it lightly, and then I seasoned them with some AP and a little steak yeah. rub and grilled them. And I was like, man, this cheap sirloin steak that I got for like four ninety nine a pound tastes like something from a steakhouse. I mean, it was like good beef flavor. And so the next time I told, I told you I did it, I did it on a ribeye, and it was just as good. And so this time, that's why I have started you been using it. I should have showed anybody, really. <laughs> I should have just said, <laughs> kept my mouth shut, and just run it, and not did it, because now everybody's going to be putting beef concentrate on their steaks and kicking my butt in contests. Have gonna you be used my... it at a contest before? I have not. I have uh, not. Okay. I have not. I just started doing it. Yeah. And maybe that's been around. I just hadn't seen anybody do it. I've seen people use Worcestershire. I've seen them use Worcestershire soy. Oh, yeah. You know, there's different kinds of marinades. I, I used to use Worcestershire as a little, you know, moistener. For steaks, if you want that flavor. But this, all it gives it is a beefiness. It beefs up. And it goes ahead and kind of gives it that color. Oh, and it, yeah. And so, okay. It helps. Now, so I have seen this in steak, steak contests, yeah. and I have did this. There's this kitchen bouquet. 
Oh, now it's you like, really yeah. get into it. Yeah. You're really letting well, it Well, and it kind of stains up the top a little bit, <laughs> gives it that dark look. If you've ever seen these old gray steaks, you want to get rid of that gray, you want to have it a beefy, really good look, you got to get something on there to make that happen. It ain't just natural, you know? And so... <laughs> <laughs> So I use beef based concentrate. Okay. okay. Well, little side note here. Um, so when I turn the videos live on YouTube, I always put a little section underneath there that says what Malcolm used so people could find out what you use. You know, yeah. they might not go and buy the product, but they can see, see what, it, what is. it was. Yeah, I got it at Kroger. I, I didn't order it. On. Well, I put a link to the Amazon. Oh, you can buy yeah. it on Amazon? Oh, yeah, you I can buy it on that. Know. Yeah. So I put a link to the Amazon. So if you want to buy it on Amazon, you can, but you could go and see the brand and see what it looks like before you go to your grocery store, yeah. you know. Um, when I was doing that, I found out that they have different products too. They have one that's just for, uh, burgers. They have one, it's like a garlic burger. Now that sounds delicious. Is this what you were yelling at me when you were doing the show prep this morning? <laughs> yeah. So, oh my God, I'm, I'm looking, I'm trying to see where that stuff is. Oh, I, oh, I ordered it. Oh, you ordered some of Yes. It? It, okay. It's called Kitchen Accomplice Wicked Juicy B- Beef Burger. Kitchen Accomplice. That's the brand name. The Kitchen Accomplice yeah. is the brand name. The Wicked Juicy Beef Burger. Look at vegetarians. They have uh, a, a chicken one. They got a no uh, bone broth. Plant based. Come on. But I try. I ordered the regular beef for your juicy burgers mm-hmm. and the roasted garlic. They had like a oh. smokehouse or eh, you know yeah. I don't like. I'm down, garlic. man. They had a chipotle turkey. I didn't know they. Ha- I didn't know that Kroger don't have all that. Uh uh-uh, uh. I've no. got two. I've got the beef and I've got the chicken. Yeah. But they don't We're have, a pork. They have a pork. If they got a mm-hmm. pork, I'm getting that. I don't see a pork. You know what they I like turkey, to use it when I'm doing noodles. Chicken. I like to add a little bit of that in my noodles. When you say noodles, are you talking about ramen? <laughs> <laughs> my top ramen. My noodles. <laughs> <laughs> Like you fancy. Yeah, look how fancy. <laughs> I like some ramen. It's hard times. <laughs> hey, Michael's been on a ramen kick yeah. lately. I got on him because of Carter. When we get on the vacation, <laughs> we eat ramen. It's pretty good. Hot sauce and a little beef concentrate. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, um, they have a lot of different things for you to try now. This kitchen accomplice. Yeah. Oh, good. And y'all check them out because it's really good on steak. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, you. So you don't take much. I mean. Just put a dab on there and put a glove on or a brush and just kind of brush it around, and it's going to just make the outside real good and sticky and beefy. And it doesn't – I mean, it just – it don't give a fa- – like a beef flavor. It brings out a beef flavor to yeah, me Yeah, is what it does. It makes well, you, it – You're not putting a lot. No, it's not enough. It's not like I'm making a beef broth or soup or yeah. something, you know. But it's, it's really good. I've used it – I've used it in my brisket wrap before. Make a – yeah. It's good in there. Fortify, oh, yeah. Fortify some au jus. But, so that goes on the and outside. And sauces. It's really good. It's really good. Sauces. Yep. Um, so, then you say little barbecue rub. I used hot rub. You could use any kind of se- steak season you want at this point. But since I was smoking baby, it. You could have used whatever. Yeah, the barbecue rub. I was going for something that, if you think if you'd season a brisket with it, it would be good on here to smoke. So any kind of beef that you're thinking you're going to smoke, that would be good on that ribeye. And, um. A little bit of steak rub to give it some texture, a little, a little spiciness from the different peppers in mm-hmm. it, a little crust, and that's all that went on it. I fired the drum up, got it stabilized at 275, moved that big old tomahawk over to the grate, put a probe in it. Now that's... That's something to talk yeah, about right there. Anytime you're cooking a big, thick steak, you know, if, you're, if, if I, I'm not probing my little steaks, unless I'm in a contest and I'm trying to just watch them, I usually don't even probe them there. I usually just yeah. use a thermopin. But anytime I'm cooking something that's thick, when I'm talking thick, over an inch and a half, I'm going to put a probe in it because I don't want to screw it up. I don't want to overcook it. And, that I mean, that, that steak was, I think, $44, $45, something, you know, yeah, $50. Yeah. It's an expensive cut of meat. I mean, you're talking three pounds of ribeye, prime ribeye. Yeah. So well, you don't want to screw it up is what I'm getting at. Put a probe in it so you can watch the temp, right? Yeah. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> How much of that? Three pounds was bone. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't weigh, I didn't weigh the bone. <laughs> That'd have been a good. Uh, we could have weighed it after. See what it was. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. If, I mean, I'm sure you're paying for bone. Yeah. But anyway, part of it. So, so, the, so I use my ThermalWorks dot. Put the probe in it, and you want to go center mass, but you want to stay away. Like the way ribeyes put together, you know, it's always got that fat pocket mm-hmm. in the middle of it most of the time, and that's good. 
because, I mean, fat's good in a steak, but you don't want to probe into that because you'll get false readings. So you want to make sure you're kind of in the center of that eye. That's what I do. And kind of lay your probe on top, see where you want it, and mark, make, kind of mark it and stick it in. And what I found, like on a steak like that with this spinalis wraps around, sometimes I don't want to cook apart. If you got that probe going through there, it's kind of pins. It helps it, it yeah. Yeah, you don't have to tie it. So, and that didn't come apart. I don't know if it, it might have when I was flipping it and all that. If I, because a lot um, of times that, that fat will melt out and you'll just separate. Now, it happens in steak contests. That's why we tie them so they'll stay together. Yeah, but you could have. I could have tied that one. It was starting to separate at one point, but no big deal. Yeah, no big deal. So. Why did you why did you place the butter on the pit uh, so far in advance? Keep it warm, let it brown a little bit. Um, I probably could have put it a little more over the hot hot coals and got it because I think it would have been better with a little bit more brown butter. I mean, it browned yeah. some, but if I'd have started with brown butter and put it on there, man, it would have been another level. <laughs> it would have been like exquisite. <laughs> so I uh, put the butter on there about ten minutes. I'd already like had it sitting out. And let it melt. I set the set that pan on the lid where it was good and warm, so it'd be melty. That way, I could season it, and I didn't have to wait on butter to melt. And it was ready to go. It was kind of off to the side of the drum, up against the wall, yeah. so it wouldn't you screaming could, hot over coals. You, know? you could tell from the start of the cook to the end of the cook that it did change color. The yeah, butter yeah, it did. It started brown color. a little bit. It starts to separate. You get the solids in the bottom. And yeah, I just just slather it all over it as I'm cooking. <laughs> get sloppy with that brush and let it fall down. And that's what. As I was doing that, I mean, my intentions were I didn't know, I didn't know how that cook was going to go. Yeah. It was more of a test to see if it would turn out, and I just I didn't want to screw it up, so I had a probe in it. So I said, I know I'm not going to overcook it, and it can't be bad because it's prime beef, and I know the seasonings and all the flavors is good because I've used those before. So all it was really was you know seeing what it would do, seeing what the you know that, that tomahawk would taste. Yeah. So about let's see, ten minutes in, I put the butter on. Ten more minutes, I think we we're at twenty minute mark. I was about a hundred, a little over hundred degrees. I flipped it so it cooked even. I didn't want it one sided cooking. Yeah. And yeah. then once it started getting a little bit over, you know, one twenty, I was like, it's time to start getting some butter on it. So at that point, when I start putting butter on, I said, I'm not even gonna shut the lid. I'm gonna leave the lid open on this drum and I'm gonna let that butter drip down. And I know it's gonna make under those hot coals, that hot royal oak, it's gonna make it flame. And that's when I started talking about, oh, it's flame kissing it. And I was like, I was had the Burger King. Flames going at that point. That's what I'm talking and about. You can't recreate no, another cooker. You can't. You yeah. can't. So you would just have to, at that point, if you were cooking on something else, you would baste it and shut your lid and wait. Yeah. Turn it, baste it, shut your lid and wait. But I stood there with it. Let those flames roll. Had me some heat gloves on where I could flip it, baste in both sides, constantly letting that butter drip down and flame up and it smelled. Oh, man. Unreal. It smelled so good. You just got all that goodness floating in the air, steak juices, butter, seasoning, hickory. I mean. By the, to me, by doing that, you pretty much turn that drum into a direct cooker. <laughs> kind of, but still. For the end. It's far enough away at that point. It's kind of like Santa Maria style. Yeah. Because you're way up above the fire, and you're still not close to it. So it was it was phenomenal. I mean, it took, total cook time was about 40 minutes, 45 maybe. And, and so it wasn't long. It wasn't a long cook at all for that steak, but man, it was good. And um, going slow allows you to really nail that done. Up. Yeah, and you can. And, and I had the thermometer in it the whole time. So then, once it hit about, I don't know, it was one twenty six, one twenty seven, right in there. It was trying to creep. I was like, oh, it's time to go because I'm creep. I'm not letting it all. I'm not I'm not taking it to medium. I want it medium rare. Yeah. And so then I set it on the board. And I knew I wanted it to rest for at least ten minutes. And and you said, I hey, just leave that thermometer in there and just watch it. I said, okay. Because I know it's going to go to about one thirty and top out. And that's, that's going to be exactly perfect. And that's exactly what it did. And it did. And I kept telling you, okay, it's one twenty eight. Come over here and film it. It's one twenty nine. <laughs> come over here and film it. And we hit one thirty. It never went above one thirty. Yeah. Like we let it stabilize, and then it started going down. Yep. One twenty nine, one twenty eight. So I let it go all the way back to like one twenty five, where I took it off. And then so it was about twenty minutes, wouldn't you say? I didn't run yeah, the timer, yeah. but it probably was. It rested that long, and then I pulled the probe out, and sliced it up. And enjoyed myself. <laughs> Best part of the day, I get to try it and I get to just oh, bask in the deliciousness. It was very, it was so good, very good. Did you uh, get? Because uh, I did eat some of it, like holding it up and take. We I got some, some pictures, pictures. Yeah, you didn't put them on there. I didn't see. Them Not yet. I got them. Yeah. I'm gonna do something because they're really no. Those are some good ones. I haven't 
Oh, you haven't, I haven't seen them yet. I don't. Yeah. After we film this, we're so busy doing other stuff. I, I don't know. have time to. You're the one that gets to edit and look at it and see how crazy I well, love Well, this it. one was kind of a. We filmed on Wednesday. I edited Wednesday night and Thursday, and we released you know Friday morning. The so this one this was morning. a fast one. Yeah. And now we're talking about it on the podcast. That's our week. <laughs> That's all we did. Um, <laughs> uh, so someone What's had a question that I thought was a really good one. Um, could you get bone marrow out of that bone? I don't know. I think that comes out of the bigger, you know, femur bones. Femur bones, the, yeah. Bone marrow bones. I've, I've, I just wrote that on my list. I've had it on my list for a while, but I it's wrote it on my new social. current list to, to ask Kevin or ask a butcher about if they could. If they can get it for me, yeah, you know, I mean, I'll order it. You know, just want to know where to get it, but I yeah, want to source cook it. some. Yeah, a, I want to make some bone marrow butter. B, I just want to eat some bone marrow <laughs> with some brioche bread, with some toast, some to- brioche to- toast points, and then that'll change your life if you've never had bone marrow. See, bone marrow is good. A little salt over it. I'm probably put a little TX on it. It's all it needs. Yes, that would be on perfect. the drum, so you get the drippings. And just let it go until it starts liquefying and just getting all coagulated and delicious looking like beet butter. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Pretty much. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm doing it. I just got to find it. Yeah. We'll find it. Canoes of beef. That's what they'll call it on a menu sometimes. Um, If I see it, I usually order it. Yeah. Uh, Real quick, I wanted to talk about we didn't do a podcast last week. Uh, we have. What's going on last week? We are opening a retail location. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> We've had six trucks here today. And it is kicking our butt. Yeah. But we're going to. Got stuff everywhere. We didn't even make it. How many more meetings do we have to have about retail? <laughs> I've cut you out of them at this point. Okay, good. <laughs> but we've got our inventory ordered. I saw a bunch of uh, uh, crawfish cooking stuff come in the warehouse. Some Bloody Mary stuff come in the a warehouse. A lot of cast iron. Some uh, cocktail this, stuff like all stuffed olives and sauces and we got this all our new stuff. Hassle, really? Some hassle uh, beef jerky and beef stick. Yeah, some Indianola pecans from Mississippi. We got this Local really honey. cool jambalaya pot. Yeah, I can't wait to cook on that. It's a big standing cast, cast iron. iron. It comes up like waist I don't know high. four foot. It's yeah, waist, waist high. high. I can't wait to cook on that. I yeah. want to render some. I want to render some daggum pork in it. Make some crackles. Heck yeah, that's a way to season that pot. Wait. Oh yeah, that's what. No, that's what I would say. As soon as I get it, we're gonna I might, season it with yeah, cracklings. No, I might put two pork bellies in it. And just keep cooking it. It just cooks down some pork belly cracklings. Oh man, it's gonna be so good. Then make me some lard. We'll make me some beef tallow. Get some beef fat and cook down in it. And put it in a bucket and put it in the fridge. I got I got plans for my cast iron pots. <laughs> um, what about you? What you do with yours? We got an oyster one. It's like yeah. For doing char grilled oysters, yeah. and oyster tray, cast iron, where you can th- see what I like about that is you can just go buy fresh shucked oysters and put them in there. You don't have to if you don't have the shells, you can just serve them on that cast iron. Heck yeah, with doing like your up. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's gonna be good. Yeah. Um, Recipes coming for all this <laughs> stuff. I promise you. So grilled chicken tacos. Yeah, I love that recipe. <laughs> I mean, it's a good recipe, but I love to eat that recipe. Like I finished off. I think. We had thigh meat left from that for several days. I finally finished it off one day last week. Just made me some fast tacos. I go grab me yeah. some shells, throw them in the microwave, put a little of that meat in there, and put some hot sauce on it, a little pico. You got to stay up close to that mic. Man, thighs. You can't beat grilled thighs. That's I'm what I'm telling you. that forever. I know. I know. You ain't telling me nothing. I love thigh meat. You I have, have that one bread. more uh, chicken ancillary contest with those boneless, skinless thighs than in probably any other category. Yeah. I mean, because I used to just, it was automatic. It was going to be first place. And people hated it. Like, you just got them old Aldi boneless, skinless thighs from Aldi. And all you do Marinated is- them and cook them and sauce them. And- I want you to share that recipe. You've never shared that recipe. It's easy. I need to get. you Mike keep. That's what you it. say. I, I need to hand that one down to Michael. <laughs> Son, here's your chicken recipe. <laughs> You can't do this. You need to hang it up. I say, I say, baby, won't you do that chicken recipe? You know that you won so much with. You say, oh, that one's too easy. <laughs> I'm not doing that one. That's not a good recipe. You want me to do it? Yes. I'll put it on the list. I'll put it on the list right now. <laughs> I think I can write left handed. I need to move this list. Um, but the thing about those grilled chicken tacos is, we can make a really big 
dinner for a lot of people off a couple of chicken thighs. By the time we make some fresh guac and some rice yeah. and some beans, and then you do the the chicken for the tacos, it's it's oh yeah, it's, super it's awesome. easy. That and a flat iron steak. Like I get yeah. a pack of those chicken thighs and one flat iron steak, and you got taco dinner I for mean, a lot of beef people, and yeah. chicken. Yeah, um, throw in some shrimp. Man, <laughs> they, they also make really good fajitas. With the peppers and yeah, the onions yeah. and some tomato, a little mushroom, do them up fajita style. And they're, I mean, they're good for any application like that. See, what I like about those boneless, skinless thighs is you can go any way you want with them. You, can, you know, if you want to do them Asian style, it's all a marinade because chicken takes on anything. And the thigh is so forgiving, you cannot screw it up on the grill. Yep. If, as long as you cook it, don't undercook it. That's the only one thing you can do. But heck, I mean, you know, 175 is easy to get it to. Yeah. I and mean, they're not, and if you go over, it's still forgiving. Just rest but, them, yeah. keep that juice, any juice that comes out. That's what I love. That's what makes them so good. Like throw them in a pan, put a little full over it, let them sit and rest before you cut Don't cut them so they come off the grill. And then there'll be all that good juice in there and then toss them, cut them up, slice them, and then put them back in the juice and toss them around. Man, maybe a little pinch of extra seasoning just to pop them. It's dynamite. <laughs> it's um, dynamite. You made a marinade, but a lot of times we'll buy a store-bought marinade. It's actually the Kroger brand. Simple Truth Cilantro Lime yeah, Marinade. Yeah, it's the healthy marinade. <laughs> it's got the white and green label for healthy stuff. Organic. Organic, yeah. But it's good. It is good. It's got a lot of cumin in it. A lot of cumin. Yeah. That's what makes it good. They've got a lot of good stuff in the private selection stuff at your local Kroger. <laughs> but I just wanted to talk about that recipe real quick. Yeah. Cover it. The whole, like, uh, did we not talk about that? It seems no. like we did. Oh, we oh. might have. But we didn't talk about it. We didn't do a, a, podcast, a podcast after that. Was that, was that last week? I, you know, I've lost track. I don't know. <laughs> it's already October. We're just hanging on at this We're point. We're just hanging on, yeah. Uh, but so this recipe, <laughs> easiest chicken taco recipe you could do. You go get you some boneless, skinless chicken thighs. They come in a little tray. Usually there's six of them. Trim off any of the excess fat. That, if you want. If you want to. You can leave that fat on there and let it char up. But I like to trim it off. This thigh fat is kind of nasty. Yeah. And then I throw them in a marinade. You could use the store bought one, like Shell just talked about, or I did. Um, I did my own version of a cilantro lime marinade. I just use some lime juice. Yeah, and, and it's good. Lime zest, some oil, um, you know, a bunch of uh, one bunch of cilantro, cilantro and lime. Yeah, some finely chopped garlic and onion. It was really good. What else did I put in there? You mean pull yeah. it up? Yeah, pull that up. I should have had that pulled up. I'm sorry. Here it is. It is I'm just gonna talk to me about it. oil, water, lime juice, zest of the lime. I hate the zest of limes. Why? It's so good. It's it makes bitter. stuff pop. It's very bitter. It just makes it pop. Cilantro, some diced onion, some diced garlic, salt, so cumin, black pepper, black pepper, pepper and oregano. Yep, that was it. Yep. Mixed all that up, put those lime, put those thighs in a bag. How, how long can you marinate them? They need a couple hours. Yeah. I mean. Would you go overnight? I mean, it, it probably I never probably wouldn't hurt it. Yeah, you know when I used to do those just thighs and like a, an Italian vinaigrette, I'd go throw them in the cooler on Friday or Thursday and let them soak all night. Yeah, it ain't gonna hurt anything. They're as long as you good. keep them cold, thigh is so neutral that it's gonna absorb all that flavor and it's probably gonna get better. But I mean, you don't want to put them in there till the muscles break down in it. <laughs> that lime juice is eventually gonna break it down. That's true. You probably need to be yeah. careful with the lime juice. But it, it would last overnight. I mean, I just say optimal to one to two hours is optimal because you're going to get plenty of flavor on it. But if you want to throw them in there in the morning, let, set them in the fridge, and then when, when you get home in the evening, you know, to it would be good. It'd be good. Um, I wanted to talk real quick about Gamekeeper I didn't meat. go over the whole recipe. Oh, though. sorry. It was just the marinade. <laughs> so then I took them out of the marinade <laughs> and blotted them off. <laughs> I seasoned them with some grande gringo. Oh, we're hanging on. <laughs> Fired up the grill, <laughs> and I did the two zone on the Weber. This one kept all the coals on one side, put the you know cool zone on the other. Started yeah. started the chicken thighs out on that side, the cool side. Let them go. I don't know, ten fifteen minutes till they started looking. Flipped them, got a little seasoning dried on them. All the moisture's off. They're looking good. About half cooked, probably. Yeah. Then I threw them over and charred them, and I was just going to get charred at this point. Just you want to build that because that's really what makes it good. It gives you some crunch. 
gives you some really good flavor. The chicken starts dripping down on those coals too. Yeah. And man, and then you take them off, rest them, and then cut them up and serve them taco style with whatever you like. I like pico. I like like a sour cream crema. I use some lime yeah. in there. Use some uh, hot sauce. That's a real simple one that I put. I, I bet I put the recipe on here, didn't I? You did, and um, it's I really called it good. creamy lime taco sauce, sour cream zest, juice, Mexican style uh, Valentina, pinch of salt and pepper. It's the easiest little sauce to whip together, but so much better than going straight sour cream on a taco or I anything agree. Mexican. And then, of course, you got to have some avocado, little extra lime wedges. I like a little extra cilantro on mine. But hey, if you want lettuce and tom- lettuce and cheese and tomato, go with that route. Put whatever you want on these chicken tacos. As long as you get that marinade on the boneless, skinless thighs, leave the breast for something else, making chicken tenders for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> but go with – you know what – you know why – oh, this is a side note. You know why General Sal's chicken so good and t- Chinese takeout joints so good? Because they use thighs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've never liked breasts. I I've always thought they're dry the and dark meat's where it's at. But thighs are – now, now, see, I don't, I'm not, I don't like to eat fried chicken thigh. Well, you go, if we go to get grandma's fried chicken or Popeye's or, you know, somewhere it's got Gus's fried chicken, I want the breast and the wing. That's what, I like that. Ugh. I will. I mean, I'll eat them, but they're not my favorite. But using them in recipes, thighs is the way to go. So now we can talk about <laughs> That was it. That's the chicken. That's the grilled chicken tacos. <laughs> For that's worth. That video's out there. Go watch it. <laughs> um, no, I was wanting to talk about GameKeeperMeats.com. Mossy, so, Mossy Oak. Division of Mossy Oak. Yeah, Mossy Oak started this new division where you can order um, wild game. Yeah. That's butchered. It's high quality wild game delivered to your door. That's where we got the gator. Oh, yeah. No, I'm pulling up my email right now. They sent me a thing. Did you read that email? It was they're having so they're gonna have some wild boar mm-hmm. shanks, wild boar ribs, uh, and I was like, I'm gonna have to try this. Would you would you cook wild boar? Yeah. What has been always been your hold up with wild boar? You've been a little iffy with wild boar. Well, see now I know these guys are getting they can't just be going out and trapping a hog and selling it. Yeah, a wild hog. They've had when you go balls. get a wild hog, you've been around one. There's some nasty creatures. <laughs> They'll eat any. They eat you. If you laid out there dead, they they probably try to run you down and kill you and eat you. They would. They wouldn't. They'll eat anything. Trash. It don't matter. Tear a field up. They're vegetarians or omnivores. Or whatever. They're pr- they're pretty much like the buzzards of four legs and hair and big old tusks and they teeth. Stink and they run in groups. Yeah. But they'll eat anything. So it's always been nasty to me. I mean, just I mean, now I've half I have ate some. I'm just everybody always asks. Oh, I got this wild hog. You want to cook it? No, I don't want that. I don't know where you got it. I don't know what it's been doing. I don't want to put that on my pit. But if I go from some uh, source that I know yeah. that they have to have some standards they're holding us to, it's wild boar meat, I want to try it. I'm, I'm curious, you know? Yeah. And if I kill, like, say, I would cook one that's been trapped, and I know some guys that do this. They set hog traps, and then they don't just go kill them. They'll go feed them and get them cleaned out for, like, a week to run everything, feed them some corn. Then they'll dispatch them and clean them, and they're probably okay, but. Things carry a lot of disease too. Yeah, they do. Um, butcher uh, David Busca from Butcher Barbecue he said he won't touch them. Yeah, <laughs> he'll butcher anything. <laughs> he gave us some horror stories on that. Yeah, heck yeah. He said, uh, "He give these, you heartworms, right? He gives you some, of, yeah, some, some kind of worms that you can get some kind of parasite worms. that attacks your heart and you can't get rid of it. Yeah, you can, you can get a transplant, heart transplant. It'll still come back on you. And it's because it enters your skin. It's not from consuming the meat." It's from processing it because if you like some something they carry or can carry, um, if you have an open wound or a sore, if you're processing it and you get some of their blood on you some kind of way, and it gets in your bloodstream that way, you can get infected. And it's not if it's cooked, it kills it. You know, it cooked to a proper temperature. But I don't want to. I, I wouldn't want to process one up myself. Well, they that also- worried me enough to say, oh, nope. I'm that for the kid. <laughs> no, <laughs> no chance there. I don't want some heartworm <laughs> to deworm me. <laughs> Does advantage make something that you can give me for that? You think I took some of Minnie's little chewies from Dr. Patberg and fix me up? I'm just thinking about having to worm you every yeah. night. <laughs> <Don't worm me. laughs> um, None of that. Well, would you? So they're going to have venison, elk, rabbit, 
and bison on top of the wild alligator boar too. Too, yes. but this one says <laughs> volcano <laughs> shanks wild boar shoulder wild boar st louis ribs huh and he's and they got wild boar bacon too they said take a look at it and if uh you think you want to cook some of it put an order in i said okay you don't think i'm going to like, yeah you know we got some rabbits in the freezer like right now yeah and i I don't know about. I was gonna. Have you ever cooked a wild rabbit or a rabbit? I've never cooked a rabbit. Yeah, I've never cooked one. A lot of people have sent us rabbit. Well, mama's cooked rabbit. We've had rabbit dumplings. Yeah, they cook stew, rabbit stew, fry it, and put it in gravy and simmer it. If I cooked one, that's probably what I would do, some kind of way. You don't think you? I'd grill it and then cut it up, cut it up into pieces, and then grill it and then put it in Dutch oven. You know, with all this stuff and make a gravy, so it'd be kind of grilled rabbit and gravy. That's a <laughs> rabbit. It's going on the list. And gravy. The only other time I've had rabbit when it wasn't Easter, like a. I think they'd like cook the Easter bunny. I like that idea. <laughs> Let's really make people mad. Um, the only other time I've had a rabbit was at like a real fancy restaurant. or Yeah, know. and I've had rabbit loin like that. That's pretty yeah. good. You can't tell what it was. Yeah. You wouldn't. And I've had wild boar at restaurants and it's like, you know, it's cooked down. I thought, we have those like wild boar shanks just smothered down. It was just tender, delicious meat. We had smoked. Um, to, it's Torino's of rabbit. I forgot what it was called. Uh, to, is it like Torado? Yeah, Torado's of rabbit or something. Give me pronouncing all that fancy stuff. <laughs> and then he numbered some fried rabbit. And they also had some ready to cook sausage that looked really good. Yeah, like it was yeah. already I'm, I, I need to go check out their website because. When we got yeah. the alligator from when they first contacted us, it was very early on. Like they didn't have it built. They were yeah. they were just fishing the ideal around. And they had it coming. You know, they do what they wanted to do, but now it's supposed to be up. So you can go they've got a Facebook page, they've got a market where you can order all this stuff and I guess they'll ship it right to you. Yeah. So I'm I'm excited to try it. They had a venison they have, and they got some elk. Yeah. They had a venison and blueberry sausage. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't sound too good. <laughs> I kind of want to try it. So, and deer and sausage. Maybe. It, maybe. I don't know. It's chili season. It is chili seasoning. So I thought today we might talk about soups, stews, and chilies. Sounds like a plan. I've got a really good, uh, you know that chili recipe I did, the Dutch oven? Yeah. How many people have told me they've entered that in a chili contest and won? Yes. I don't, I've never been in a, I guess I have only chili contest I've cooked in we in get, South Haven. Two predominant comments on that recipe. The one that it's too spicy. No, 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 no. It is. Uh, I have. I love this recipe. Yeah. I've entered it in a contest. I've won. I impress everybody with this recipe. And the second one is, why in the world would you put sugar in your chili? <laughs> <laughs> like Balancing. they hadn't tried it. They hadn't tried yeah. it. They just. Oh yeah, no. They probably said, why'd you put beans in there too? Did I put beans in that one? Um, I don't know. Uh, no, it's been so long since I've done that. A few beans. You know, when I make chili, I don't really have a recipe. I don't either. <laughs> I just start making I gotta it. Go, I got to And I'm making it, and I taste it, and I make. I made a big pot last week. It's so easy. Um, I love chili too. Oh, this one I made with brisket. That's the one I was talking about. Yeah, you cooked a chopped up the peppers and onions and the Dutch yeah. oven. It wasn't brisket. It was a chuck roast. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, you smoked yeah, a chuck roast. Have sugar in there, balance it out. You have to have sugar to balance it out. Yeah. The different kinds of pepper. You know, it didn't taste sweet. It didn't make the chili taste sweet. It just makes it taste. That one's good. Balanced. Good. You read that recipe right there. If you said that don't taste good, something's wrong with you. <laughs> the one we made last week and that we brought up to the office and um, shared with everybody, we used poblanos, jalapenos. I call it three pepper chili. Yeah, it was three pepper chili. Yeah. It was red bell pepper, poblano, and jalapeno. It was good. It was really good. It was a little spicy. It was spicy. Had some tail in it um so what's your favorite chili do you have a favorite it's got to be just red chili i mean you call it red chili chili or texas chili or whatever beans or no beans um some beans i think it needs i mean i I don't i'm not i love meat chili only it's really good yeah but i like some beans too i'm a fan of beans and i but i'll put like you know if we make a big pot maybe just one can of beans yeah you know i mean but I, i like it uh White chicken chili. Now I make a really good they're white chicken on my level with the white chili too. So and I've never done that recipe. I need to Mm-mm. do that. I was thinking about doing a when I was smoked kinda, white chicken chili. Yes. 
That would be really good. Put it on the list. Write it down. It's already on one list. But. Um, and the thing about I like about the white chicken Some chili <laughs> is when I yeah, serve it. Here, I um, when I serve it, I'll put a uh, serve it with some cilantro and avocado, and you know, kind of almost have a toppings bar. You know, I love a good you toppings bar. Fritos. Fritos. The original Fritos, not the big scoops. The yeah. original. Sour Sometimes cream. I'll have both. Hot sauce, extra yeah. hot sauce. Yeah. That's what makes chili. The hot dogs. See, I like chili dogs. I do too. I am a fan of a good uh, all beef hot dog that's been steamed, bun steamed, and then with the chili over it, cheese on top, and let it melt, some jalapeno slices, and just a little line of mustard, yellow mustard. It's so good. Maybe a little onion. I hear what you're talking a about. Classic. I like it. I have that on my list to do. I was going to do it a was chili supposed to dog. Be this week. Oh, Next really? week. Next week? It's coming week. But yeah. see, that chili that I like to do chili dogs with is more of a chili sauce. Yeah. has ground beef in it, but it's, you know, it's not runny. It's kind of a... But it's not chunky. Yeah. No, it doesn't have the peppers and the onions and all that stuff. It's just like the essence of all that in there. Yeah. And you cook it down into where it's almost, um, it's almost like a meat, gra- uh, a Southwestern meat sauce gravy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like for... For a, like a, a meat sauce you put over pasta, but yeah. with all the chili flavors in it, it, that makes it like a good hot dog chili. Yeah, because you don't want it too, too chunky. No, you don't want a big old bowl of Texas chili when you're doing just chili dogs. Yeah. You want chili sauce. That's kind of So that's what I was thinking. I was going to do that. Well, what's your favorite way to eat chili? With my mouth. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, I don't know. Uh I like all the toppings with it. Yeah. I like the If you're going to make, okay, I've made a bowl of chili. You've got all the toppings. Make it. Do you put Fritos in the bottom? I don't know if it's my favorite way, but okay. this is how I grew up eating chili. Okay. Bowl of chili, some saltine crackers, and cinnamon rolls. And don't yeah. ask me why, but cinnamon rolls go with chili. It's an Arkansas thing. It's an Arkansas. My mom would make homemade yeast cinnamon rolls. Like she always made yeast rolls. Like Sunday dinner type mm-hmm. rolls, but then she would take that yeast roll dough and flatten it out, and then melt butter and cinnamon and sugar, and then roll it up and cut them, and then put them in a baking pan and let them rise, and then bake them, and then put this real like I don't know, um, it's like a thin icing, yeah, almost like a sugar icing over the top of them, and then we have it with chili. This is what we always had, and I don't know if it's an Arkansas thing or just my mama thing. But it's <laughs> no, so good. The only people that I know that do that are from Arkansas. So you know. Cincinnati style chili, they serve it. Uh, it's a cinnamon based. Yeah, it's, got, uh, it's cinnamon got a little candy. sweet, a little cinnamon in the chili. Yeah. It's not super chunky, and it's uh, uh, served over a lot of times over pasta, over spaghetti noodles, and they'll put cheese over the top of it and onions. Yeah. And so I need to make that for you sometime. Cincinnati chili. Okay. You don't think you'd like it? Uh-uh. Why not? Because I don't like cinnamon. Uh, but my rub's got cinnamon in it. Didn't even know it. <laughs> it ain't like it's gonna be. It ain't gonna be full blown cinnamon chili. You know what? I'll try it. Yeah, I'll try. I'll Maybe try I'll just. Thing. Yeah, I gotta try. I gotta. I gotta make that for you and see if it'll pass. Um, what's your favorite kind of way to eat chili? Just with all the Fritos and the. Um, if I'm just gonna do most of the time, I just like it depends. I like a good you chili. Out. You know, how, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to tell you what your favorite way is? I've seen you do it. You get, um. Premium saltine crackers, <laughs> blue plate mayonnaise in a bowl, like a doll, big old dollop of it. That's how I grew one up. bowl of chili, nothing on the chili, and then you smear. <laughs> some, you like to use the word smear. You'll smear some of that blue a plate on a cracker, smear. and then you'll take it and put some of that chili on top of that. And I was like, "You're not really eating mayonnaise on your chili, are you?" <laughs> That's how we did it growing <laughs> up. <laughs> That's got to be your favorite way. So I I was weird because I had cinnamon rolls. At least I wasn't a mayonnaise eater. <laughs> have you ever tried it? Yeah. No. I have not. I still ain't put mayonnaise. I can see maybe. What's the difference uh, between mayonnaise and sour cream? A lot. <laughs> That's a big difference. <laughs> That's a big difference. So. They're white. That's the only thing that's similar. <laughs> they have a similar they both, I don't even know if mayonnaise. You consider mayonnaise dairy? I guess it's made out of dairy. It's an oil. Yeah. It's more of a salad 
Yeah. Moving right along. Do you know the difference between soups and stews? Uh, I can tell you what I think it is. Okay. Uh, a stew is hearty and thicker. And a soup to me is runnier. <laughs> it's, you know, it's. Yeah. You, you know, that's the I big mean, difference to me. What What's the difference? What do you think the difference is? I mean, I looked it up. Oh, what's the difference? <laughs> Technically. Yeah. Soup, the main ingredient soup is liquid. Um, and stew uses liquid just enough to support the like the meat, the, the, the meat and the veg. So um, stew is a, di- a dish that's prepared by stewing either a vegetable or a meat down. So when I think of stewing, I think of cooking, braising something yeah, down, breaking it exactly. down. But we always, there was a fine line in my house because whatever you had that was roasted or braised, Eventually turned into a soup. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was like That's it kept I, stepping. It I might start out as pot day. roast, but then it was going to be pot roast, beef stew, maybe some sandwiches <laughs> yes. if there's some leftover in there. Yeah, and then eventually it turned into vegetable soup. Yep. And all they kept doing was add more liquid to it, <laughs> trying to get every bit they could. And it'd be cans of vegetables and then those little mixed vegetables. And that's one I think I always cans of tomatoes. I hated pot roast day because I knew we were going to be the whole week. The you, were the week. <laughs> you were down. You were down. was going to make cornbread, <laughs> and you was going to eat cornbread and some form of that meat. <laughs> well, what's your favorite soup? My favorite. Wow, that's a tough one. Or what's the t- thing that pops to you top of your head? Potato. Creamy that. potato soup. That one just popped into my head. That was what yeah. I was thinking when I was thinking of soup. I love a good tomato basil. Yeah. Creamy really tomato basil or yeah. just plain tomato basil? Where do you put I do both. so where do you put like gumbos and chowders in there though? That's a whole that I guess that's a whole different section. Because those but are I do soups because gumbo would probably be my number one. I put hot seafood soup category. Yeah, but see cause see gumbo is like a cross between a stew and a soup. Yeah. So I don't know. It's, it's kind of almost its own little category. It is. Because you is. serve it over rice. French onion. So what's the difference added. between gumbo, etouffee, and jambalaya? Well, jambalaya is like a rice dish. It's not soupy at all. It's just rice with meat and stuff. Yeah. Etouffee is kind of like a sauce with rice. Like you serve it over rice. It's, it's kind of more tomato-y. Isn't it's it? more of a salt, like a Cajun meat sauce. Yeah. yeah. You know, whatever seafood you put in it. So, uh, and, and gumbo, gumbo would be is a, a stew. A stew, yeah. stew, I would say. But man, you guys, I got to, got to thinking those foes and those are some good. of those ramen bowls. And man, those are so good. How can you rate those? Good. What about lobster bisque or a good shrimp bisque? You got me. You got me a bisque chowder stew I soup. Love- <laughs> Anything besides like chicken noodle or. Hey, I make a killer like chicken yeah, noodle. Yeah, you do make a good chicken noodle soup. Chicken and dumplings. But it, What's chicken it, and dumplings considered? That's its own category. It's not a stew because you stewed that chicken down to make your. And then you make this creamy broth that goes with it, and you make it's the noodles and put in it. It's like a pasta, really. It's a dough. Probably. Man. It would probably go into more of a pasta. Yeah. But some people do chicken dumplings all jacked up. Like yeah. they make them, and they're like biscuits off in them, and they're too thick, and you can put them on a plate. Tortillas. You don't eat chicken, you don't eat chicken and dumplings on a plate or a trough. Yeah. You eat, you eat in a big old bowl. Mine's practically a porridge. <laughs> like where, where, do, where does porridge go in here? I don't know. That's some big made up word. <laughs> the bears. Yeah. Um, I do an enchilada soup that's really good. That one's fire. Chicken enchilada soup. Yeah. Yeah. That one's really good. And there's a taco soup that I've done in the past that you really like. I like taco soup. I mean, I'm not I'm a fan. It's that time of year. It got me thinking about all these different soup time. Soup stews and chowders and bisque. You know a soup that I really like, but I never, um, I never really, I've never cooked it, but I'll order it as a French onion soup. Yeah, Got I've that. ordered sometimes they put that that uh, cook that cheese on top. It's like a bread with a cheese too, or something. Mm-hmm. You break it and it's all kind of bubbling out. It is good. A cheese soup. I've never been. Uh, a fan I'm of not a fan cheese of cheese soups. soups. Like beer soup, beer I cheese, beer and all that. Soup. Yeah, that's not my thing. I enjoy beer, yeah. and I enjoy I cheese. Drink, you messed up two good things. That's like <laughs> my dad's told me that before. Boy, he just went and messed up two good, perfectly good things. He told you that when we were uh, sticking put- a vodka bottle in a watermelon. <laughs> 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 but it applies to beer and cheese, too. <laughs> Does it not? 
<laughs> Wait, why were we trying to make a drunken watermelon or something? Spiked watermelon. It's spiked watermelon. Yeah. <laughs> I remember him saying that. You just went and messed up two perfect, perfectly good things. <laughs> he wasn't wrong. <laughs> Vodka in itself is a good thing. Watermelon is a good thing. Put them together. It never works out the way yeah. you think it's going to. Um, I also like a good clam chowder. Yeah. Not a big, uh, you know, the chowder I like is corn chowder. Yeah. It's really good. But it's, you know, that's pretty much potato soup. Potato it soup really is, is. kind of a chowder. It's more of a potato chowder because that's what makes a chowder a chowder, right? It's cream based and it has potatoes in it usually. Yeah. Some form. Well, what makes a bisque a bisque? No potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> this is just my random rules. <laughs> <laughs> if you put potatoes in a bisque, all of a sudden it turns into a chowder. I like this. Am I wrong? I, I, I get on board with that. <laughs> I'm just seeing where you are if you're standing with me. <laughs> always. Even when I'm not so, quite sure, I'm always there. Uh, <laughs> and really, I looked up stews because I was like going to bring up some favorite stews, yeah. but the only thing that would pop up is beef stew. There's really only beef stew. No, I, I know one that's awesome. What? Brunswick. Ooh, and Brunswick yeah. stew is, and, and man, it's. You've got a good recipe yeah, for the Brunswick It's going to be, yeah, and I need to be making some of it coming up. I'm probably going to oh. for deer camp. It's got butter beans in there. It's got It's pretty much vegetable flavor. soup, meats, everything off the smoker. Yeah. Tie it all together with some tomatoes and a little ketchup and Worcestershire, and you got Brunswick or barbecue sauce, and you got Brunswick steak. That's what I was say. Instead of using the ketchup, there's a big argument sauce. where it was from. If it was from Georgia, or if it was from Carolina, or is it Kentucky? I, I can't remember. There's they, they make one called Burgoo. Yeah, it's kind of like a Kentucky Brunswick stew. It's there's all kinds of stews out there now. Don't, the don't, Burgoo made with a lamb. Yeah, sheep. Yeah, yeah sheep. <laughs> More likely, <laughs> <laughs> lambs for roasting and chopping. Oh, sheeps for cooking down. That's what we grew up eating, sheep. sheep. Um, so that's all I had for... That's all you have so for stews. That's a good... <laughs> it's, hey, not, the, it's not the, the most in-depth topic to talk about. No, it's really not. But, I mean, what does it take to make a good one? <laughs> um, need, time. Time, yeah. Experience. Time, time and good stocks. That's the main thing that makes a good yes, soup. Yes, if you can stew. make your own stock, you'll have an awesome that's soup. That's it. And another thing is taste it. Taste it while you're cooking. And season it. Yeah. Season it. Don't be afraid of it. Get some good flavors off in there. Yeah. Don't be afraid to use some of that kitchen assassin. What was it? Kitchen assassin or kitchen assistant? What's he called? That little chefy man? <laughs> kitchen assistant. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Kitchen no, helper. Okay. The kitchen helper man. I closed out my page I was on with him. Um, Those little concentrates would go great in stews and stocks. Get and you soups. some concentrates. Yeah. But... That's a. So what do we got co- coming up? Kitchen accomplice. We've got. He's an accomplice. He's not an. A, okay. We have. Um, I'm trying to think. I got the chili dog thing on my target, but now I've got some other ideas and some of that gamekeeper stuff. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I could back up and punt and go some different directions. But we could do Brunswick uh, too. We. Um, I gotta start getting prepped up for this hog cook we got coming up. The SEA yep. first, I think we did I mention that in that last podcast. I think so. Yeah, but, we uh, talked S- about it briefly. First hog, the first whole hog SEA ancillary events coming up at Martin Lam- Lambert Sweet Swine O' Mine Distributing Headquarters in Vihalia, Mississippi. Thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth of November. Yep, we're going to be down in Startville uh, this month, the twenty oh, fourth, yeah. with the Palmer Home at. Yes. Um, Mississippi the Palmero State. Center, or Palmero. Palmero, Palmero. I guess it's like their sports complex, uh, indoor yeah. practice field. It is. Um, and I think some of the football players are so going to be there. We'll be passing. Out, they're, they're doing a tailgate to go fundraiser for Palmer Home. That's a, a local charity that we support here in Hernando. Um, they take care of a bunch of kids out there, and it's a you know it's a really great call. So we yeah. try to help them just because they're in our backyard. So, uh, but we're I'm going down. I'm, we're cooking. Butts and beans, and we're bringing the buns, I think, or we got somebody. Bimbo's uh, donating the buns. From Tupelo, who's yep. donating the buns, and that's going to be a tailgate to go pack. You'll, yeah. If you go to the Palmer home, I think they're still selling them today, maybe the last day, but you can go ahead and sign up. It's going to be a party pack for four. Four, four yeah, people. It's a tailgate it's got, for four. It's gonna there's going to be beer. There's going to be all kinds of good stuff. In yeah, the Palmer home get, always gets the best stuff. Yeah. You get um, 
They'll drive. Pulled pork and beans and, and fix it. You get a big barbecue dinner for four. Yeah. Yeah. And it's you take be good. it home and it's watch be side. The game There's all kinds of sides there. Yeah, you get desserts. other people to make and desserts and beverages and you can go home and watch football. Yep. It's gonna be a drive through thing. I'll be there. Y'all can shout at me. I don't know if they're gonna make me COVID up. I don't know. Um you'll be doing a remote. Yeah, we're doing a remote from there. Are we? <laughs> <laughs> we're doing something. In we will be on the twenty fourth. Yeah. But most importantly, um support the Palmer home. Yep. If you can, if at all possible. Um we also are going to be opening our retail store. Later this month, hopefully. Um, first of next month. We're stocking it. We're trying to get our occupancy permit. Fingers crossed. we got a meeting tomorrow night with the board. And uh, y'all come out and say it's in Hernando. <laughs> we'll be open probably November 5th, 6th, something like there that. There is a Christmas in Hernando thing that's going to be going. I won't be here. <laughs> the store will be open. I'm going to be cooking a hog. <laughs> Shell will be here, so y'all can come see her, take your pictures with her. Nope. <laughs> no pictures. But I'll come be by, here. check things out, and uh, do some Christmas shopping, because that's what it's all about. Yep. Um, But, yeah, that's all I have today. It's been another fun week, Shell. It has. We cooked a good steak. We got made some progress on the business here at the, at the headquarters. We still haven't got a name for it. We're going to have a lot of fun stuff, and we appreciate y'all hanging out with us and watching the videos and yes. listening to the podcast. And we will be back next week to do this crazy thing again. Um, if you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it's – hold on. Let me put it on. Okay. <laughs> put it on you. I if like you, It's hard to, like, do the switcher and have a conversation, and it it's hard. It's been great. Um, if you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it's How To BBQ Right on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you'd like to connect with me, it's Miss Southern Shell on Instagram. We appreciate y'all hanging out. We gone.